Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. Now we're finishing up on these next video or two with, uh, with Unit 1, the basics of geography. And today we're going to be looking at maps and the different categories of maps. So basically what we're looking at are just kind of just the different types of maps that you might find uh, and how we categorize them and what exactly it is that they're showing. Now, the first one you you probably are most familiar with. In fact, several of these you're probably familiar with and you've seen before. Uh, but anyway, so the first one we have a reference map and we have several different types of thematic maps. Now, the main difference between a reference map and thematic map is that the reference map really is used to show, to show where places are or maybe where places are and you can look at them in relationship to another. Or, or how do I get from one place to another, especially like a road map or something like that. The thematic maps are really used to show uh, what's going on in a particular place. And so this is where geographers, uh, especially human geographers, are going to be spending most of their time with these different types of thematic maps. Now, as I said just a few, a few seconds ago, each map really is going to tell a different type of story. Uh, and we have to be very careful when we're examining the maps uh, to, to think about the way in which the map is relaying the information to us, especially with the thematic maps. Uh, because if we're not careful, a lot of times the way that the map represents the data to us can uh, cause us to make, it's not necessarily misrepresented, but maybe to understand it in a little bit different way. And a lot of times it's one of the things that the cartographer is trying to do. They want you to see the data in a particular kind of way. And the way that you visualize the data can actually be manipulated based upon how that cartographer is going to represent that data. And so if we have time, I might try to kind of talk you through that just a little bit. So you see there, the first one we're talking about is the reference, uh, the reference map basically just shows you the common features of a place so you can find out where places are, where things are at on the landscape, things along those lines. I'm not really going to show you, I'm not going to worry too much about the reference maps. Uh, again, the thematic map, uh, it's used to show one particular feature. And when I say one particular feature, I'm talking about one particular uh, data, uh, set of data or information uh, that's going to be common. So when the geographer is doing their research, that's the first thing they have to decide is what exactly do they want to look at? Do they want to look at population? Do they want to look at males? Do they want to look at females? Uh, do they want to look at income? Do they want to look at, uh, you know, how many, uh, how many Canadian geese live in an area? Uh, you know, how many... How many people reported sickness in their homes? It, really, anything, again, anything that you could collect data on. How many people are named Mr. Elrod in an area? Anything you can collect data on and, and get information on uh, can be really put into a thematic map. So really, it's up to you and, and what exactly it is that you want to study. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go through the different types of thematic maps. So the next thing that we're going to do is go through the different types of thematic maps. So this one is what we, uh, is what we call an isoline thematic map. Now you'll notice here uh, one of the root words of, uh, of isoline is the term line. Uh, and so basically that's what isolines have, uh, is they have lines on the map. Now the lines there are used for a specific purpose. And actually you could also say this is a choropleth cliff map. Um, anyway, so the lines are, are used for a specific purpose. And the lines are there to connect points of equal value. Uh, so here we have a, a map showing average temperature and a period March 18th to the 24th, 2001. And you can see that each of these lines here is going to map out an area for us. Now, as I said, it's also maybe a good example of a choropleth map because it uses the shading uh, to, show e uh, to show different values. But anyway, so the isoline map is always going to have the line, and the line is going to connect points of equal value. A lot of times you'll also see isolines on a topographical map that shows elevation. I don't have an example of that here. But you could go on the internet and go, go to Google and search out topographical map and you would see that there. And if you're familiar with hiking and orienteering and those types of things, you would have seen, um, you would have seen a topographical map. The next one is what's called a choropleth map. Now the choropleth map is, is basically going to use different shades of color in order to represent information to us. And most of the time it's going to be varying degrees or very various degrees of shading and so you can see here what we're looking at is the state of North Carolina and the different counties how much money they spend per pupil in each county and you see the, the lighter the, the lighter the color the less money the darker the color the more money that they have and you can see the different uh, ranges here that they have uh, of the amount of money that's being spent and so uh, as it gets darker that we can very easily visually see 
uh, we can see uh, the amount of money very easily and we let our eyes kind of go there where the most amount of money is being spent. Now some things that uh, with core pleth maps you know you see where things are at but within there are obviously things that this particular map doesn't show you. It doesn't necessarily show you how effective those dollars are. Uh, it doesn't necessarily show you where all of the money comes from uh, for the for the money that's being spent. You also notice here uh, that not all of our groups are exactly even in terms of uh, in terms of the amount of money that's being spent. You see here this is a gap of about $600. Uh, this looks like maybe it's a gap of about $200. So um, you know the 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 actual categories, and then our most expensive is you know uh, is is well over. It looks maybe about sixteen hundred dollars in difference. And so those are some ways in which the map is not necessarily always going to be uh, accurate in its representation. Again, that's a choice the cartographer had to make in terms of how they were going to display this data. And you know we don't exactly know why they decided to do that. But again, that is that is a core pleth map. The next one we have is what's called a proportional symbol map, and it's exactly uh, what it sounds like. Uh, this is basically going to use a variety of different shapes in order to represent uh, the values. Okay, sorry, not a variety of different shapes. You're going to have shapes that represent a value, and the larger the shape or the larger the symbol, typically, the larger the value. The more frequently something is happening in that particular place. Now you see here we have a map that's talking about the population of countries of Africa. And with a map like this, a lot of times the purpose is to try to help you see what is uh, what is the relationship between land area and the number of times that something's happening there. Uh, and so we can see that not always does land area always uh, equal more frequent occurrences. And so in this case, just because the country is larger doesn't necessarily mean that more people are living there. Now. One of the things that's definitely not shown here that that is uh, you know that helps doesn't necessarily help us to understand the complete situation is uh, population distribution within the country itself. Where are those people living at? Uh, and you know if we know something about the geography and the and the topography of of Africa, you know that helps us to understand a little bit about why certain people are not living as much in in certain countries, things along those lines. But anyway, so that's a proportional symbol map again. Uh, and with a lot of these, the main point is so that it's very easy to see uh, what's going on in a place and your eye is, is taken to a specific um, area. The next one is what's called a dot density map. Now, again, just like the proportional symbol map, basically what, we're, what we mean by dot density is that there's going to be a dot uh, represented per occurrence of an event of some kind. Now the thing that's different between the dot density map and the proportional symbol map, and a lot of times my students get confused between the proportional symbol map and the dot density map. Notice here the proportional symbol map uses circles. They look kind of like dots. That is not a dot density map. This is a proportional symbol map. This is a dot density map. Each dot represents the exact same value, whereas in this case each symbol represents a different value based on its size. In the dot density map, the dot represents one, okay, one uh, value. So in this case, is one dot equals 25,000 acres of cropland that is harvested in the United States. Now, what's important about the dot density map is not only does it show us how much is happening in a place, but it also shows us where it's happening. So it shows us a little bit more of that uh, that distribution and, and where and uh, where it's happening, where it may not be happening, and that can lead us to further questioning things like that. Now the dot density map, I might argue, is one of the easiest ones to manipulate uh, because based upon how I want people to feel about this map, I might change the value of the dot. So if I want more dots, then I would just create a dot that's worth less. And so therefore I would get a more, uh, a, a much more intense focus on certain areas and it'd be much easier to see uh, how things are going uh, as far as how frequently something is happening. Now if I wanted a less intense view, Maybe I didn't want people to feel as strongly about something. I might create a dot that has a higher value, and so therefore I have fewer dots, so the information isn't displayed as prominently. Uh, so anyway, uh, that that is the dot density map, and uh, those are the, the some of the uses for it. The next one is what's called a cartogram. Uh, this is maybe the one that you've seen before, but it's definitely the one that kind of sticks out there in your mind because it tends to be the most absurd. Uh, and so basically what's happening is is land area 
or the area shown on the map is being used to represent some type of value or some variable, how often something is happening. So in this case, uh, we have here a cartogram of the world. And uh, this is from the year 2002, so obviously uh, the population figures are not up to date. And so what we're looking at is land area based on population size. And so you notice that uh, automatically some countries look much larger than they should be, some countries look much smaller than they should be. And again, the idea there is to think about uh, how is land area, uh, how is that somehow related to the variable. And in this case, it's really not in terms of the actual land area. I mean, we look at something like, you know, some of the things that are kind of very easy to see is Canada. Look how much smaller Canada is. Look at Mongolia up here on top of China. Uh, look at Russia has been shrunk way here to the left. And so, again, it's just, it's almost to overstate the point of how often something is happening in a place. And, and since we kind of have an idea of what the world looks like, you know, this really, it, it kind of can bring a almost a shock factor and almost you know sometimes it's kind of comical uh, when you look at these cartograms. Uh, so that's going to end our conversation today on maps. Uh, we're going to end uh, our unit one discussions with the next uh, video and that will be on map making technologies.